Hi again. I'm back here in my box that I never left at any given point, except the box looks like it did back at the ass end of 2017, where it's a lot smaller and it's a different color. But isn't this nostalgic, guys? But it's the same box. Shut the fuck up. Despite my inability to leave this box, I have a very exciting announcement to make to you guys. And that is, I will be attending the inaugural JackCon in 2019, hosted by the one and only Amazing Jax Films, the person I have absolutely no beef with and have nothing bad to say about. As stated previously, I am restricted to the confines of this box, so I will be attending in the form of Skype video chat on a screen that's mounted to the head of a roughly humanoid figure that looks kinda like me. Anyways, today we're gonna be talking about everybody's favorite failed convention disaster, TanaCon, which as the name might suggest was run by the one and only Tana Mojo. So for any of you who might be out of the loop, let me fill you in on what the whole thing was about. Themed condoms and all. So it all started when the content cop survivor Tana Mojo decided that VidCon had treated her like a used box of Pop-Tarts, throwing her away after she had given them everything she could. And because of this perceived mistreatment, Tana decided to start her own convention with its own set of creators. It was to happen on the same days as VidCon and it was called TanaCon. You already fucking knew that. Now way back when, when I first heard that this shit was gonna happen, I was almost certain that it wasn't gonna go through, and in a way I was dead fucking on. But ignoring the factor of hindsight, let's talk about my perception of the event as we were building up to it. At the beginning, like I said, I was skeptical. I just didn't think that Tana misspelt last name could run anything like VidCon, even on a smaller scale, with a bunch of featured creators and the like. And I just didn't really know how much support she would get from other creators that would be willing to sidestep VidCon to go and attend TanaCon. Fucking TanaCon, that name is still a hell of a thought process to get to. But as time went on, I started hearing news of creators that I recognized that were going to TanaCon. The first big one that I'd heard of was Shane Dawson. And that one wasn't too big of a surprise considering that him and Tana have been friends for a while it seems, and he didn't really have a major connection to VidCon to start with. But then I heard other names that really caught my fucking attention, like Miranda Sings and Casey Neistat. I don't know if either of them ended up going, but they sure as hell caught my ear when they were first mentioned. The convention was getting endorsement from other big creators like Keemstar, but he was trying his best to get involved in it, and he was encouraging other creators to go to TanaCon in place of VidCon, because he said that it was an event that actually supported its creators or something along those lines. On one of his shows leading up to the event, Philip DeFranco even said that he hoped the event did well, and we kind of know how that ended up turning out. I mean, VidCon this year is expected to have 30,000 people, but I think more and more you're gonna see things like a TanaCon pop up where people go, wouldn't it be more interesting if, if instead of all of these people, it could be one to four thousand of a kind of more central. But also on the other end, with this being a test, there is the possibility that it becomes a complete shit show. And so that's also another reason I'm interested in it. But we'll see. Personally, I hope it does well because the success of others and people being more independent in this community leads to more success for others being independent in this community. The shit show comment was probably a little bit of an understatement, but all of that hype leading to the event and a bunch of other things that made TanaCon looking like a really interesting case study to keep an eye on, regardless of how it turned out. And we're finally at the days of the actual event, which keep in mind, many of them were the same as VidCon days. And as you probably already know, shit fell apart like a tower of bread only held together by poorly spread layers of mayo between said bread. Shit design, really should have used peanut butter and jelly. But the event was expecting around 5,000 people to show up, and the venue they chose was listed as having a max capacity around 1,000 people. Which as most everybody with the ability to count knows is a fairly decent sized jump in people. This miscalculation was a major fucking disaster for the event. There were people waiting outside of the event in the heat for hours with no water, food, sunscreen, or just a lot of other necessary shit in that kind of California heat. And there was a bunch of other stuff happening that was considered shady around the event. The event was meant to have free tickets that you had to reserve with relatively cheap VIP tickets that you could pay for. They would get you like goodie bags and a fast pass to like a specific meet and greet of your choosing or something along those lines. But then rumors came out that free tickets weren't even a thing and that every single person outside of the venue was someone who had paid for a VIP ticket, not just a bunch of people who were there for free entry. And that only scraped the surface of a bunch of organizational issues that went on behind the scenes. Like in regards to the meet and greets for featured creators, a bunch of the people who had reserved spots for those meet and greets didn't show up on the list of people who had reservations. If you want to get a better idea of the chaos that was the behind the scenes of TanaCon, Shane Dawson made a fantastic three-part docuseries on the whole thing, and it's genuinely a really good watch. A lot of information came out through the docuseries, and there's a couple bits that I want to hit on from it, but if you haven't already, I highly recommend giving the whole thing a watch when you get a chance. But the series itself focuses on two main players in this whole thing, with Shane Dawson really just being the center man between these two players in a way. The first is Tana Mojo, who obviously has her name on the event and had all the branding for it, stuff like that. And Michael Weiss, who seemed like the behind the scenes guy for trying to organize the whole con. There's various disagreements between them on how certain things happened during the planning stage of the event, like timetables that were given, things that the other person said, but the first two parts of the series pretty predominantly focus on either one of the two parties individually and their side of the story, and the third is the two finally having a confrontation over FaceTime for the first time since the event collapsed worse than the Golden Gate Bridge in literally anything. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
There's also near the end Tana saying some stuff after the call when Michael is no longer there to defend himself. And the bit I mostly want to focus on from the docuseries is at the very end of part three, where Shane lays out a couple of hard facts that he was able to get after recording the majority of the series. The official number of VIP tickets sold was 5,108. The number of free tickets was between two and 300. Michael claims that Tana knew that and that she was lying when she said she didn't. And Tana still says she didn't. Wee woo, wee woo, there's a hardball right there. The allure of the event was supposed to be that it was free and that the majority of people there would be attending for free, but seeing as it was mostly just fucking VIP tickets sold by a massive margin, it kind of defeats the purpose of the fast pass abilities that were supposed to come with the VIP passes. And regardless of that, they weren't too thorough about checking who had actual VIP passes to begin with, but I'll get into that in a minute. The number of security guards was never 91. I got a hold of the contract, and it said that at most, there was 25 security guards at a time. Now to put that in perspective, for most conventions, it's usually 50 guards per 5,000 people. So this was cut in half. The amount of money spent on security was $60,000. To put that in perspective, the amount of money that VidCon spends on security is one million dollars. You can tell pretty easily just by looking at footage that was uploaded by people who attended the event, or attended if you can consider standing outside for like eight hours attending, but you can tell pretty easily from footage uploaded by them that the security was pretty miserably understaffed. There just wasn't enough of them to do everything that needed to be done. Testimonies were going around of bags not being thoroughly checked at all. I personally know of people who made it inside TanaCon who didn't buy any fucking tickets. They didn't even reserve free ones, they just got in. The whole thing was just a massive fucking mess. This is the big one, capacity. So I got a hold of the contract between the Marriott and Good Times. And the contract stated that there was only going to be 1,000 people. And Michael signed it. Now I talked to both Tana and Michael about this and they both said that yes, the contract might have said 1,000, but everybody at Marriott told them that that was just a safe number and that 5,000 was okay. So from this alone, I think we can pretty safely say that they were kind of solidly tipped off ahead of time, that they had at least some inkling that the video that they had wouldn't have been able to hold all of those people. What's more damning though, is the footage of them talking behind the scenes where they know that the event was projected at having 5,000 people there, and that the venue they chose could only hold 1,000 people, where Tana seemed almost excited at the idea of there being people outside waiting in line to get into the event. But what is capacity? The hotel told me to call the group, but obviously like- In like the main ballroom. Right? Oh. I have it set at 5200 right now. I love that for us. I can also kind of just like set no capacity and then just be like, okay, we're gonna sell out when we sell it out. It would be really, really cool to have people like outside waiting to get in. Like people love to be oppressed outside. Yeah. They're just like, I waited in the rain. Like they love that shit. Oh, yeah, I love that shit. Really. And then they like wanna watch people just arrive too. They're like, ah! <laughs> it's not a good look, and rightfully so. It's the kind of shit that you think you would be hearing in some kind of movie plot where the two warring parties are trying to convince a third one that the other is at fault, but also being kind of passive about how they do that. That third party being Shane Dawson, and I guess us the viewers to some degree. Now at the very end, Shane says that he doesn't think that either Tana or Michael is evil, and that they just majorly fucked up, and essentially that they just got in way over their fucking heads. They're young and all that, they make mistakes, whatever. So he doesn't really allocate blame to one place or another. Which is fair enough, it kind of leaves us to answer that question for ourselves. I think it could have gone harder on Tana, but I understand why he didn't. And while I don't personally know who I think is at fault, there was a comment made in the comment section of the last part of the series by Hank Green, who was the former CEO of VidCon, where he addresses some of the situation. In that comment, he doesn't say that TanaCon was his fault, but he does acknowledge that it was some of the decisions he at VidCon chose to make that helped lead to Tana's initial decision of creating TanaCon. But the in-between they chose to have insofar as kind of, kind of not having her as a featured creator was dumb, and that they should have gone all in or all out. And don't take me bringing this up as me trying to blame this on Hank Green, but I think it is important to recognize the shatter points that kind of helped bring us to this point that we're at right now, and also Hank's own acknowledgement of responsibility and the recognition that running events like these is hard, even for people who have experience doing it. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to drop a like, and if you're new, subscribe. If you guys have any of your own thoughts on the topic, think that I missed anything, or that I got anything wrong, be sure to leave that in the comments below. The next video is one that I recorded while I was out in Anaheim. Hopefully that'll be up in the next couple days. To anybody who's pledged to the Patreon, thank Thank you guys so much. If any of you guys are interested in taking that extra step in helping out the channel, there's a link to the Patreon in the description below. Even if you don't pledge, that's absolutely fine. I appreciate anybody who supports or watches the videos. I have a podcast with Wild Spartans and FBS Diesel called Loud Mouse. We upload two new episodes every week on Tuesdays and Saturdays, and we're up on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter at Quite and on Instagram at Quite.png. Links to all of those in the description below. And lastly, I also have a Discord server. Link to that in the description as well if you're interested. Anyways, this has been Quite, and I will see you guys next time.